Well, hello again, everybody. Um, so today I'm starting a series of three recipes and um, teaching you how to joint a chicken and make chicken stock with the bones. Um, here's a little beauty. Actually, we should be saying this a bit quieter so I don't want to upset my chickens. <laughs> Um, but you're doing three recipes from this one chicken. Yeah, Yeah. so the benefits of actually um, jointing a chicken and not buying joints are number one cost, um, huge difference in cost. If you buy um, one chicken and, and take the breasts and the uh, drumsticks and thighs off it, as opposed to buying them separately. And then also you get the carcass to make a really nutrient rich stock to make a variety of soups and sauces from the beef. So, um, right, chicken onto a board. Now, I don't have colour-coded boards at home, um, but what I do advise that you do is try and keep one board just for raw meat and raw poultry. Um, the risks are minimal, but um, it's really important not to pass any of the bacteria from raw meat onto anything which is cooked. So, got a little chicken here. Um, most of the jointing can just be done with one of these sort of vegetable or utility knives, as we call it. And the first thing we're gonna do is just unwrap the string. Now, um, that's your chicken sort of as it would be in the, in the uh, roasting tin, ready to roast. But to join it, what we're going to do is start with it turned over with what we call the parson's nose, or its bottom, um, away from you. You like right there, Libby? Ugh. Libby doesn't eat meat, so she's loving this. <laughs> I'm really struggling. Absolutely loving this. Ugh. Right, so first things first, what we're going to do is do a line right down the back. And then at the smallest bit, effectively sort of its waist, we're going to go across. Oh my God, he's nice. Now, <laughs> oh Libby, come on, you're, you can do this. Now what that does is it gives us a point at which to take the drumsticks and thighs off, but also it allows you to scrape out what we call the oysters, which are these little nuggets of really tender meat just at the back. So using just the tip of your knife, can you see I've literally just gone in there and peeled back that one oyster there. And then, actually we'll turn it around, it's a bit easier. Then we're gonna do the same here. We've got the two oysters peeled back. Now what we're gonna do now is flip the chicken over. And we're gonna take, first of all, the thigh and the thigh and the drumstick off. So if you sort of pull the drumsticks apart, you'll see a sort of, skin part here. Put the chicken on its side. Actually, it's probably easier if we show you with the oyster here. And then cut into that skin and you'll see that there is a natural membrane separating all of that there. And we're going to do the same with the chicken on its side here. Cut through that piece of skin and you've got that natural membrane. Okay. Now this is the only bit where some people get a little bit squeamish, but it's honestly, you've just got to think cost, flavour, and for me, just buy the very best quality free range organic chicken you can to start off with, then at least the chicken's had a very happy life. <laughs> okay. We're so not eating ours though. Um, no, we're not. No, we're not. Okay, okay, we're not. We're not allowed. Right, now all we're gonna do here is we, we want to dislocate that sort of effectively <sighs> hip bone. Oh my God, <laughs> sorry. Right, the Libby? Yeah, i And what we're gonna do is we are just going to pull it back on itself and that Thigh, um, that hip bone will pop out. And then putting the chicken on its side, you can see where I've released that oyster. And all you have to do then is take off that thigh. So really easy. So we're gonna do it again, just literally putting it to its side. You should almost have no noise. You're just pulling it back on itself. And then on its side, use that oyster as a guide. And out you go. Now, coming back to these, we've got effectively two drumsticks and two thighs, and we want to separate those. So what we're going to do is turn it over, pull back the skin, and you'll see this line here. Um, <clears throat> it's what we call a fat line. And if you feel that fat line should be pretty much exactly on top of the knee joint, and what we're going to do there is cut easily straight through it. Okay, like that. I went slightly into the joint there, so just adjusted the knife. So again, feeling it here. Okay, so that should come apart really, really easily. And there you've got 
your two thighs and two drumsticks. And how much would that be in a supermarket? So that's going to be oh, anywhere from about £2.50 to about £4.50, depending on the quality of the chicken. So for per? For, for that pack. Okay. Um, whereas this was um, a beautiful chicken from our local organic farm and it was £7. The two breasts, again, would be anything from sort of 4 to £7 on mm. themselves. And a pot of fresh stock would be anything from sort of, again, 2 to £4, depending on where you bought it from. So hugely more economical. And you're not wasting any food either. Now, these joints here, our next recipe is going to be um, a Moroccan chicken tray bake using those. But I'm going to show you how to take the breasts off in a moment. Now, you've got the, um, the, the sort of um, main bone dividing the, the sets of ribs down here. And you want to just feel that. That's the breast bone. And then put your knife either side. So one cut down there. And then another cut down there. Trying to keep as close to the bone as possible. And then just pulling that flesh back. Getting the tip of your knife. And cutting away all of that breast. And the same one here. That's a big chicken breast as well. That is a lot. You compare that to when you get in the supermarket. Yeah, absolutely. So it's nice and it's not been injected with water. It's, you know, good size. It's nice and plump. And um, really, I'm going to show you, well, the recipe I'm going to show you with these two um, is a really nice little lunch picnic dish where you marinate um, the chicken. It's called chicken zorba and serve it with hummus and yogurt and lettuce in lovely pitta pockets. But that would be a good stir fry actually yeah. for four people. Um, so I'm just going to wash my hands. Really important after you touch the chicken not to touch anything else. So we've got our two chicken breasts um, and we've got our chicken joints. Um, you need to get a nice <coughs> deep pan now and literally just pop that carcass into the pan. Now if you wanted to, you could take these chicken wings off, but I'm not a great fan of chicken wings myself. We're going to pop that in, okay? Um, if you wanted what we call a brown stock, you would roast the bones first, but I'm just going to have a nice, easy white stock, just make it as easy as possible. And I'm going to cover that carcass with cold water. So I've literally just covered this chicken carcass with cold water. There are a couple of stages to making a stock. Um, what I'm going to do first of all is just put this on to um, a sort of reasonably high heat. We're going to bring it to a simmer. Then I'm going to show you how to what we call depouille the stock. <laughs> Don't you know, Libby? <laughs> no, I didn't actually. Okay, um, we'll come back when this has come to a simmer. Now, I'm going to give you the fact that this does not look the most appetising thing in the world at the moment. A sort of pan of boiled chicken and scumminess. Okay, but you've just got to bear with me. And the first thing I'm going to do is what we call dépouillé stock. So either we're going to pour in some iced water or I've just got some ice. And what that's going to do is as it solidifies, um, or it's going to go in and melt and it's going to solidify any of the fat and bring it up to the top. Okay, this so is on a low heat. That's though. going to go in. And... If we come back in a minute, you'll see that all the sort of fat and scumminess will have been encased sort of and solidified by the ice and will be up to the top ready to scoop off. So as you can see, all the stock, have, all the sort of scumminess rather, has sort of solidified. What I'm actually going to do is swap for this spoon. And that allows us to get it all off. As I said, I know it, it doesn't look that pleasant, but what we've ended up with now, as you can see, is that really beautifully clear stock underneath. And what we're going to do in a moment is put some nice vegetables in. And then when the vegetables go in and the herbs, the aromatics for some bay and some parsley, we're not going to stir it because that will give us a cloudy stock. So I'm literally just taking all of this off. To end up with a real clear stock. Now, if I was in a restaurant or um, doing this really professionally, I'd take a lot more care and time with this. Um, but from a sort of home point of view, it's definitely worth doing, doing this. But you don't have to do it. But you don't have to do it to get every little tiny bit off. But look how lovely that is. And the flavour that you'll get from this is absolutely delicious. 
And otherwise, you'd have just thrown away that carcass. Whereas this, we're actually going to make this into a really lovely carrot and coriander soup. Just that bit there. There we go. Okay, so that. And I'm going to just chop my veg. So, um, I've got some vegetables. Uh, whoops. Stray black peppercorn. And what we call some aromatics to go into the stock. So, I've got some parsley. Um, that's just parsley that's gone a little bit um, wilted. I've got some bay and some peppercorns here. And then I've just got um, some veggies, just a bit of onion again, shallot, something like that. Just take that skin off and then we're going to roughly chop the onion up. Just in some really big chunks. We've got the sort of inside bit of celery and a few celery leaves. It's just using up everything that you've got yep. in the fridge. And then some bits of carrot. And actually, I'm not going to put that real end, but I'm going to put that bit in. So all of this now is going to go into the stock. And just, you can, whoops, top that up with a bit of cold water as well. And then we're going to leave this just at a gentle simmer for two hours without stirring it. Okay, so I'm just going to top that up with a bit more water. So a bit more water just to cover all those vegetables. Put the heat up a bit and put the heat up. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up to a simmer and then I'm literally <laughs> not going to fiddle with He's it. turned it down. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There Sorry. you go. How long have I had this cookie for? Um, just let it simmer and I'll show you what it's like shortly. Oh. Right, so here we are. Um, the stock has simmered for about two hours. And then it's just cooled while we went for our daily exercise, mm. didn't we, Libby? Yeah. Finding paths around where I live I never knew existed. It's taken a global pandemic to actually get me to go walking, mm. um, which has been very nice this afternoon. Anyway, enough about me. What we're going to do is we're going to take this over to the sink and we're going to strain. In fact, I'm going to put this in the sink. Strain this stock. It smells nice. Through a colander into a bowl. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to make a, a chicken soup or a chicken sweet corn soup, which is really lovely, you can actually pick all the bits of chicken off the carcass. Um, I'm actually just going to make a, a carrot and coriander soup, so I don't want the chicken in there. Um, whoa, it's going to come and so get wash out in a moment. There we go. So what we've got here is a really lovely concentrated, nice, clear chicken and vegetable stock. Now let that cool. I'm going to pop it into this old ice cream tub and just leave it in the fridge. You should find that it sort of almost begins to solidify overnight. Um, Another tip though is if you really well wash out two litre milk bottles. Well wash out? Well wash out? Wash out well. <laughs> <laughs> well if you wash really out. well wash out. What, what did I say earlier? Oh, I was trying to t say June and yeah. then I got June and July and I said Julu. Julu. So when Julu comes around. So in between around. June and July. When Julu comes about, you won't be able to go out again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I've wa washed out well. Milk bottles. Well washed out. Well washed out. What's <laughs> wrong with me today? Ah! Well washed out milk bottles. Um, in a jug, pour it into those, leave a bit of a gap because liquids expand when they're frozen. Bit of cross curricular science there. Mm. Um, and freeze them. And uh, you've got lovely stock for whenever you want to make a soup. So over the course of the next few weeks, I'll show you two or three soups, which are store covered ingredients, um, a pea soup and a tomato and lentil. Um, but for this little beauty here, that's going into a lovely little carrot and coriander. Which um, will be coming at the end of the week. Which will which will be on your screens at the end of the week. So um, that's it for us today, really. Um, see you tomorrow for a lovely lunch of chicken and hummus and 
different spices in pita breads using those chicken breasts. So um, have a good evening.